G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So today I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update on what's happened in the fish room over the last two months. So this is going to be my May 2020 update. I uh, thought I'd show you around the fish room, show you the fry, how they're progressing, um, show you some new fish that I bought. Also I thought I'd share with you guys some tips on how to make your fish room a little bit more efficient. And I um, thought I'd also give you guys a bit of a teaser of some videos that are due out over the next few weeks uh, with some experiments that I'm running. But let's get straight into it, alright? So, we've got some fry in the top row of tanks. You can see them all growing out. That's what these uh, tanks at the top row were um, for, and they're getting used. So, um, really glad that I got a lot of fry in here. But all these fry come from uh, six fish, basically, and they are only two different types of fish. So, those fish are below them. My Lamprologus ocellatus gold. There's a trio in here, two females and two males and my Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. Again, a trio in this tank, one male and two females. Both shellies, both little cool shell-dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika in Africa, and um, I'm breeding lots of them now, which is great, because these guys are pretty rare um, in the hobby, and they're rare in Sydney. So, hope to be selling some of these guys off soon. Uh, first two tanks are gold ockies. Next two tanks are brevis. Uh, actually, this tank is brevis as well, so the those three tanks are all Brevis Fry. And then the last tank on this rack here um, is more Ockies, Gold Ockies, and there's about 100 Fry just in this tank. The parents, both parents' tank tanks have Fry in them. This shell here has some newly hatched Fry. That's a female that's looking after them. She's defending that shell pretty well. And the female at the back there has some Fry that hatched yesterday. And there are some Fry that are older around this shell here that have been pushed out of the parents' shells. So they're going really well, they're spawning every two weeks. Same with the brevis. Uh, there's multiple generations of fry in here, as you can see, there's a lot. They're hard to see against the pull filter sand that I've been using as substrate, but there are at least 20 to 30 fry just in this tank alone. Uh, so they're going really well. Next tank that's getting a bit of an update is my Judochromus Regani tank. Uh, I've got about 10 fry all up in this tank. You can see the beautiful uh, adult pair that I have here. They're very young still, but they are breeding already. Male on the right, female on the left. Got a lot of growing to do, and there are 10 fry in this tank. Um, I believe they are the Zaire gold type, because they're getting a nice yellow coloration down the flanks of their bodies now. And um, I really hope that that color intensifies over the next few weeks. Look at that, that's the male Regani attacking the transcriptus gombi that are in the next tank. It's good that they can see each other, because that spreads the aggression amongst this pair. The female won't bash the male as much, because she's defending her fry from the gombies that you can see through the tank. You basically don't want the female bashing the male. She has in the past, but they got back together within a day. So the next tank that's getting a bit of an update is my albino bristlenose tank. There are three generations of fry in this tank, and they are hiding at the moment. Believe me guys, there are a lot of fry in this tank. I'll insert some footage here of them feeding, so you can see just how many there really are. Uh, this tank doesn't normally have a light on it, uh, but it's only on purely so I can film this footage for you guys. Video that's coming out shortly will be an in-depth species profile on breeding bristlenose catfish. There are a lot of those videos on YouTube. But I'm going to show you what I do, what I've found success with, because I've only owned this adult breeding pair since the start of March, um, and since then they've spawned four times for me. So the male is already on a clutch of eggs. As I film this, it's the start of May. Uh, so he's on his fourth clutch of eggs in that cave. So I'm going to show, uh, going to share with you guys a video that I'll most likely uh, publish in the next few weeks with what I do to get them to breed quickly and to grow the fry up as quickly as possible. So they look out for that video in the next few weeks. Next tank that's getting a bit of an update is this tank. Finally, has some fish in it. Um, they are peppermint catfish. Very hard to see. Very, very, very secretive fish. I hardly ever see them. Uh, they're about four to five centimeters each one, and there's four in the tank. So hoping to breed these guys in the next year or two. Uh, you gotta be patient with them, because they are slow growers. This tank's got my endler guppies in it, and some Java moss uh, that I purchased a few weeks ago. Ever since putting the Java moss in there, the survival rate of the fry has increased, which is great. You can see there's a lot of fry now in here. The parents aren't eating the fry anywhere near as much as they were before I added that. Java moss into the tank, uh, so that's great for them. Next little update is um, on these smart plugs. I'm sure you guys are aware that, that you can buy these things now. Uh, connects to the Wi-Fi in your home. Uh, you connect it to your phone, and you can schedule your lights, 
any appliance in your house to go on and off as you wish. Um, and you can control it from anywhere in the world. So cool little device. Um, I could have just bought your usual timer just to time the lights on these tanks. Again, I've got them now because I've got plants. I leave work super early, uh, well before sunrise, so I uh, wasn't putting these lights on uh, before I go to work. So basically I was putting the tank lights on when I come home, and they're only on for a few hours a day. Now that I've got the timers, uh, I can control this from anywhere in the world. So uh, this is on a schedule, obviously. They, uh, they schedule to turn on um, during the day and turn off at night, and I don't need to worry about it. Other cool thing with these devices is when you log into the system, you can see if there's a power outage in your home. So if there is a power outage, you can come back home and sort it out. Uh, so that's a little, uh, little uh, device I recommend that you guys can consider um, if you're running a fish room, um, rather than just using your standard uh, timers. Give these uh, things a try. They are a little bit on the pricey side, but in terms of smart plugs, they're on the low side. So you're talking $17 just for this one plug. You can buy them in packs of four uh, for $60, but I just bought two just for now, just to trial them out. As you can see, this is a bit of a mess here with the wiring. I've got to rewire it, but I will do that in the next few weeks as I fill these tanks up with fish. Next update that I should give you guys is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss experiment that I'm running. Um, I believe this is sphagnum moss. You can buy sphagnum moss off eBay for about $30 a bag. Um, it's not exactly cheap, but the purpose of sphagnum moss is to acidify your water. Uh, I'm going to do an experiment on this tank here, which is my electric blue rams. I'm going to see if I can acidify the water with the sphagnum moss and put it into their water change water. So that's a little bit of an experiment that I'm running. That experiment also includes growing it in the Chinese food containers as well as a Ziploc bag. This moss has been in these containers for about two weeks now and they're still green and they're growing. Um, I add, I've only added water once and um, yeah, they're own, their own little ecosystem. The most important thing you want to do with sphagnum moss is to create humidity, a humid environment for these guys, and they will survive. So you can see this is sphagnum moss in a bag, in a Ziploc bag. It's got water in it, its own little ecosystem in that bag, and they're surviving. And then the next little update is this tank here, and that's going to be another video that's coming out soon, and that is hatching and raising Daphnia from eggs. This has eggs in it at the moment. They've been in this tank for about 24 hours now. They will hatch in the next few days, I hope. Little experiment that I'm, that I'm running that's going to be still going to take a few weeks to film, and uh, look out for that video soon. So on how to uh, hatch Daphnia and raise them and culture them for live fish feed for your fish room. And the last update is a bit of a sad one, uh, and it involves my white calvers fry. I slowly started losing my white calvers fry over the last two weeks, uh, one to three a day. I'd come home, they'd look fine and within an hour, two are dead. Couldn't work it out. Water chemistry is fine in my fish room. It is very, very stable because it's basically 3,000 litres. Uh, pH is in the 8.4, 8.5 range, hard water, uh, no ammonia and nitrite, um, 25 ppm for nitrates, and the temperature runs between 27 and 28 degrees. So very, very stable water parameters. Very mixed diet for those fry. Live microworms, baby brine shrimp, uh, mysis shrimp, um, the food that I made a couple of weeks ago, which is uh, mashed up fish and uh, prawns, they love it. They were doing really well, and all of a sudden they started dying. And I think I worked out what that was. Basically, it was me scaring them when I went up to the tank to feed them. When they were first put into that tank, they were fine. They would come straight. Then they'd see me at the front of the tank. They'd come towards me. They were all good. Feed them. Happy days. Last two weeks, go to the front of the tank, and they dart around the tank, scared. I basically think I was scaring them just purely by opening the lid of the aquarium and feeding them. Uh, you can't help but sometimes make a clink sound with the glass of the lid, so I duct tape that lid um, around the edges so it wouldn't make that sound. However, me just appearing at the front of the tank on my little uh, step ladder behind me was enough to scare them, and I think it scared them enough to shock them where they would just slowly die. It was very, uh, very uh, frustrating and very sad. It's, it's pretty upsetting to see. So I finally worked out a way to feed the fish without being in front of the tank. And that's basically because I'm running a, uh, an airline into their tank. You can see the fry there. There's an airline that's running in the tank there. You can just see the end of it there. That airline runs across uh, these four tanks to the top of this tank here. I get my syringe, 
fill it up with, uh, you know, fill, put a little bit of, uh, say, live brine shrimp in it, fill the uh, syringe up with water, and inject that through, basically like an IV line, through the airline hose and, and with new aquarium water until the brine shrimp come out of that uh, airline hose into the tank. Does not disturb the tank, I get nowhere near it, and ever since I've been doing that, the fry have stopped dying. So that's a little tip for you guys. If you guys have some finicky fish, I highly recommend you do that. It will really help uh, lower the stress of your fish. Also, another tip with this syringe, they're really handy. Um, if you feed fry uh, pellet, pellet food, uh, you obviously generally soak that pellet food for about 20 minutes um, in aquarium water. Sometimes you'll crush it and crush it before you uh, soak it and um, obviously so it's smaller for the fish to eat. Well if you have a syringe and you soak those pellets in uh, say a shot glass or something for 20 minutes, the action of sucking those pellets up into the syringe breaks them apart. So it saves you having to crush the pellets first. So just get a little syringe like this, will save you a lot of time um, and effort in feeding your fry. Obviously it's got two purposes there. It's saving my calvus fry from dying I don't have to be in front of the tank. Basically like an IV line, I can feed those fish. And I can fill that airline tubing up within, uh, just by um, filling this up with aquarium water three times from one of the tanks. And that food will be in that tank. So it doesn't take too long to do, uh, but it's very worth it for those fish. Um, and it also saves you having to crush pellets. So another little tip for you guys. Um, and the last little update is my white calvus, the male, is very aggressive with me today. His aggression has been increasing over the last few days. And that's basically because the female is um, fanning eggs in his shell. You can kind of see a black dot there. That's the female. She's in the male shell and she's been in there for about two weeks. So I expect any day now, fry to be at the front of the tank. I'm hoping it'd be another 70 to 80 fry. Uh, the first time they spawned, that's what happened. All the fry were pushed out to the front of the tank, easy to catch and pop into the tanks above. So hopefully that's going to happen in the next day or two. So as you can see guys, a lot of new videos coming out soon. Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on those videos. As I said, there's a lot of experiments that I'm running at the same time. Uh, a couple in-depth species profiles coming out soon. Anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.